The Granola arc starts right after the Moreau arc. The head of the Android 7-3 survived the death of Moreau and is taken from Earth by the original owners of the Android. The data in OG 7-3 is copied to the other OG units, meaning they've gained all the capabilities of the one our heroes fought on Earth. Bad news because this guy wants to rule the universe. Even worse, an intruder is trying to steal 7-3 again. This is Granola. He has an AI companion named Oatmeal and they're trying to take OG 7-3. They make their way through all of the soldiers and even other OG models until they find 7-3 being regenerated in a tank. They've got him. A quick flashback to the past. It's Frieza's forces, specifically Saiyans. They're frightening silhouettes as Ozaru, conquering a world of people that look just like Granola. Before we can learn more, Granola wakes up. This nightmare is a recurring one for him. Granola and Oatmeal discuss his hatred of Frieza and his lust for revenge. Granola despises Frieza's army, even though he thinks Frieza is dead for ordering the attack on his people. Clearly, news of Frieza's second revival after the Tournament of Power is not widely known throughout the universe yet. Possibly even more than Frieza, he hates the Saiyans, but they were wiped out over 40 years ago. Granola has no way to seek his revenge, no matter how much he desires it. Meanwhile, over on Beerus' planet, Goku is helping Whis give the Oracle Fish her medicine. Apparently, the Oracle Fish has been having insomnia, and that could be a bad omen for the future, but it could also be nothing. With the Oracle Fish settled, Goku and Whis start training. After fully grasping Ultra Instinct in his fight with Moreau, Goku can enter the silver-haired form at will. But Whis reminds him that isn't the true end goal. Whis has a better command of Ultra Instinct than Maris, and the Grand Priest is even above Whis's Ultra Instinct. Goku must refine his Ultra Instinct, but he can't do it by simply copying Whis's fighting style. Beerus asks Vegeta if he'll try to master Ultra Instinct as well, but Vegeta says it doesn't suit him. Beerus lets Vegeta know that Ultra Instinct isn't the only technique of the gods, and that the gods of destruction wouldn't run around with their hearts and minds all tranquil. Anyway, here's a panel of Beerus using Ultra Instinct in the manga against the other gods of destruction. Seems pretty useful to me, at least. Vegeta asks to be taught the technique, but Beerus says he doesn't train people. He is about to exercise to wake himself up, though, so if Vegeta wants to watch and steal some things for himself, he's free to do so. I'm very happy that Vegeta is still doing his own thing, by the way. The various paths of power in the series, especially after Dragon Ball Super Superhero, have been really refreshing, actually. Back to Granola, he's bringing OG-73 to a group called the Heaters. Another bounty hunter, Soshiru, tries to get in on Granola's hall, but Granola tells him to keep his hands to himself. Granola gets a large bag of credits, the same currency we saw in Dragon Ball Super Broly, and he asks Elec, the leader of the Heaters, what he plans to do with 7-3. Elec has no interest in making an army of OG units, he sees more value in money and intel. You can always hire combatants, and information is what truly controls the universe anyway. Militaristic organizations like the Frieza Force are a thing of the past to him, but the past has a way of repeating itself. He tells Granola that the state of the universe has been shifting. Frieza has been revived. Granola actually has a chance to avenge his people. He demands Frieza's location from Elec, but he refuses. Granola wouldn't be able to handle Frieza even if he did find him. Granola approaches Elec and demands it again, but Gas knocks Granola down. Elec tells Granola to calm down for now. They'll take down Frieza together when the time is right, but for now, he has to be patient and wait. Granola agrees and leaves. Oil asks Elec why he mentioned Frieza, and Elec says Granola has gotten very strong. It'd pose a problem for them if he got stronger than Gas. None of them think it's possible, but Elec is hedging his bets and setting up a very likely situation where Frieza kills Granola for them. For now, that can wait though. Elec wants the info in 7-3, and with it, the location of Zuno, the man with the most intel in Universe 7. Granola is flying to Planet Serial, but on his way, he's attacked by some goons and Soshiro, who's demanding the bounty Granola received. Granola easily handles them all with his sniping abilities, thanks to his Cerulean right eye. He missed one target, however, and that was a painful reminder that Elec is probably right. He can't beat Frieza yet. And back on Beerus' planet, the sleeping Oracle Fish mumbles that the strongest warrior in the universe will soon rise up. Granola returns to his homeworld, Planet Serial. A race called Shigarians inhabit the planet since the Cerulians were killed off. It was actually the Heaters who sold Planet Serial to the Shigarians that lost their own planet. Granola doesn't stay in the city with the Shigarians because the civilization was made for them and on the mountain his house is on, he can see the ruins of his hometown, making sure he never forgets what the Saiyans did to his people. Back on Beerus' planet, the God of Destruction asks Vegeta about the Saiyans' destructive 
past. Vegeta sees the Saiyans as having carved their own fate, something Goku actually says in Dragon Ball Z. Beerus says it's a ridiculous notion, but Vegeta asks what Saiyan history even has to do with the technique Beerus is showing him. Beerus says, plenty, as he destroys one of his decorative planets. But the explosion is larger than from a normal key blast. Vegeta asks what that technique was, and Beerus says it's a small glimpse of what he can do. Before Vegeta can even ask how to do it, Beerus slams Vegeta into the ground. He tells Vegeta that if doubt continues to weigh him down, this power will never be his. Vegeta's own crimes aside, it's self-centered for him to carry guilt for the sins of all Saiyans. Beerus throws Vegeta to the side and finally tells him the truth. He was the one that suggested Frieza destroy planet Vegeta and the Saiyan race. As Beerus continues to taunt Vegeta, the Saiyan prince transforms into Blue Evolution and begins to fight Beerus, but it's just as one-sided as ever. He tells Vegeta that the things the Saiyans did in the past have nothing to do with Vegeta now. He will never be able to grow beyond this point so long as he's trapped by the past. Then Beerus grabs Vegeta's arm and uses destruction, also known as Hakai, on Vegeta's armor. Goku even points out that he tried and failed to do this in the past, referring to the manga's version of the future Trunks arc. Beerus says his mind is always on destruction and nothing else. That's why there's no limit to his power. Not literally no limit, by the way. He means his potential to grow is limitless because of this mindset, while Vegeta's potential to grow is limited by his own guilt-ridden mindset. Beerus further elaborates and tells Vegeta to destroy any stray thoughts and recreate himself from scratch before creation comes destruction. Back at the heater's base, they've finally gotten Zuno's location out of 7-3, but they also see the prisoners being released from the Galactic Patrol prison. Elec asks how it happened, and he learns about Moro, and more importantly, the Dragon Balls. Now Elec knows how to get any wish granted, and even worse, he knows the Namekians created the Dragon Balls. But Gas says something even more surprising. Namekians used to live on planet Serial with the Cerulians. It turns out Granola actually lives with an elder Namekian named Monaito. Granola tells Monaito about Frieza's revival and how he wants to be the one to take him down, but Monaito says Granola doesn't have the power to beat Frieza. Granola says he may have to resort to that, looking to a Dragon Ball in their home. Monaito says the Dragon Balls aren't for revenge, but it doesn't matter anyway, since they need the other one to make a wish, and it's been lost for nearly 40 years. If you haven't noticed, Monaito's Dragon Balls are a set of two instead of the standard seven. Then we jump to planet Namek, where we learn a bit of Namek in history. This is more lore than story, but the important points are the size and quantity of Dragon Balls depends on who made them. They were originally ritualistic, something brave warriors would seek out to collect in times of great suffering, and we even learn it's possible Namekians live on other planets in the universe outside of just Earth, New Namek, and maybe even beyond planet Serial as well. Since this is a huge lore drop, so brace yourself, the Namekians apparently moved to this universe from another realm altogether. What that will mean for the future, I don't know. Means nothing now. Back on Planet Serial, Monaito says since he's the last Namekian on the planet, his Dragon Balls will die with him. He tells Granola that wishing things back the way they were would only punish the Shigarians unjustly, and revenge would only give rise to new enemies. Granola agrees, and Monaito goes to sleep. Unfortunately, Granola is watching his space TV and sees that a Shigarian found the missing Dragon Ball, so he steals it. He goes into the wilderness and summons the eternal dragon Torombo, and Granola Granola wishes to be made the strongest warrior in the universe. Torombo clarifies Granola's wish as being the strongest mortal in the universe, and Granola says yes. Torombo says he can make Granola stronger, but only to the limit of his latent potential, which makes becoming the strongest in the universe beyond his reach. However, Torombo can make Granola the strongest in the universe if he agrees to a certain condition. Without hesitation, Granola agrees. Back on Beerus's world, Vegeta is trying to learn destruction, but he's doing it wrong. Beerus says you need to erase the target from existence, turn something into nothing. This destruction of matter is what creates the large release of energy we see. Goku continues to train with Whis and is excited to see if he or Vegeta will end up the strongest in the universe. Whis says it may not be either of them, and that surprises Goku since he can't think of anyone stronger than them, and neither can Whis. Funny enough, this should mean Goku and Vegeta are stronger than Broly at this point. Whis elaborates that the next powerful entity can appear at any time, given the scope of the universe. The Oracle Fish repeats her process 
prophecy once more, and Vegeta finally manages to use destruction correctly on a pebble. Back on Planet Serial, the Dragon Balls disperse and Granola's hair has grown long. He lifts a large boulder with Ki and destroys it. While not explicitly stated, this is heavily implied to be something similar to destruction. Monaito hears the blast and runs to him. He once again warns Granola that new enemies will rise up, but Granola says he can defeat any enemy now that he's the strongest in the universe. Monaito snaps back and says that he's the strongest today, but there's no knowing what tomorrow will bring. Granola ignores him and begins to search nearby worlds for Frieza's presence. This is seemingly Yardrat's spirit control in action as shown in the Moro arc. Monaito tries to stop Granola, but he leaves to go get Frieza's location from Ellen. Granola arrives at the heater's base and demands Frieza's location, saying that he's now the strongest in the universe. But Oil and Maki just aren't enough. Gas is about to jump in, but Elix says they've seen enough. He can tell Granola has gotten stronger, but he needs to know how. Granola tells him it was the Dragon Balls. This confirms Elix's suspicions of Dragon Balls being on planet cereal. Probably not the smartest thing for Granola to do. Alec tells Granola he doesn't know Frieza's exact location yet, but he'll get it soon. Granola says to make it quick, he doesn't have long to live. We find out that in exchange for this power, he gave up 150 years of his lifespan, leaving him with only three years left to live. After that, Granola leaves, and Alec explains his plans to the others. They want to take control of Frieza's army, not wipe it out. To protect their interests, Granola has to die, and to do that, he'll use Goku and Vegeta. Back on Beerus's planet, Whis explains to Goku that angels are able to use Ultra Instinct at all times, while Goku needs to transform to do so. The ultimate goal is to use Ultra Instinct naturally in base form and save the silver-haired form's power as a last resort for when he needs to surpass his limits. Meanwhile, Granola returns to planet Serial, and the heaters make their way to Zuno. But Elec and Gas stay back. Gas wishes he could have fought Granola, but Elec says his moment to fight has yet to come. Gas is the only heater with the potential to surpass Frieza. On Zuno's planet, Maki and Oil get answers to 10 questions. I'm sure we'll find out what they were, right? On Beerus' planet, Goku and Vegeta refine their techniques. Whis receives a call from Bulma, Maki and Oil are on Earth in search of Goku and Vegeta. They want to have the two of them fight a villain for them. An obvious ploy to us, but it works, especially when they mention this villain is the strongest in the universe. Goku and Vegeta want to claim the title of strongest in the universe for themselves, and even Whis and Beerus get involved in their rivalry. Beerus gives Vegeta an earring that's the symbol of those who can use destruction, and Whis gives Goku's gi the symbol he gave it in Resurrection. F. On Earth, Maki and Oil steal the dragon radar. Then, 30 minutes later, Goku and Vegeta arrive. Maki and Oil then take them to Planet Serial. Before they land, Maki lies to Granola, telling him that Goku and Vegeta are Frieza Force assassins. He thinks this works better for him, because he can extract info from them, but then she tells him they're Saiyans. Granola flies up and looks at the ruins of his hometown, knowing that the moment of his revenge is soon at hand. 18 days later, Goku and Vegeta arrive on Planet Serial. Maki and Oil stay behind after telling them where to find Granola, but Goku and Vegeta are getting suspicious. Before they can figure out the heater's ploy, they get attacked. Granola is sniping them from a distance. They manage to avoid the attacks, but they can't track down their origin. A blast even manages to hit a vital spot on the back of Goku's neck, forcing them to use a Senzu already. Vegeta tells Goku to stop relying on Ultra Instinct if it isn't mastered yet, so Goku turns Super Saiyan. Then he finally finds Granola and sends a Key Blast at him, but Granola manages to to dodge it. Goku says Granola is even faster than instant transmission. Granola introduces himself as the last Cerulean, and that means nothing to Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta questions Granola's motives further, but he doesn't answer and uses destruction. Goku and Vegeta manage to dodge it, then Vegeta tells Goku to get payback for being struck down earlier, so Goku versus Granola begins. Goku transforms into Super Saiyan God, and he starts to use Ultra Instinct again. Vegeta notes that Ultra Instinct seems to be more accurate in conjunction with transformations. Basically, the stronger the form, the better it is at using Ultra Instinct, which makes some sense since the limit-breaking silver-haired form is the only way for him to use it perfected. Goku dodges every attack, but it was all a distraction, and he gets hit once. The attack was light, but it hit Goku's vitals, toppling him in a single blow. Granola has figured out how Ultra Instinct works, but notes that no one is perfect, and even that technique can't hide his vitals because of Granola's right eye. Granola also knows that Goku is holding back, so he tells him to hurry and use his full power. He doesn't have time to waste here. Revenge on Frieza is his ultimate goal. Goku is confused though, since he thought Granola was the villain, but 
Before they could talk about it, Granola powers up and tells Goku he'll pay for the crimes of the Saiyans. Goku uses Super Saiyan Blue with Ultra Instinct. However, Granola still manages to strike Goku's vitals again. Stronger attacks and faster evasion won't ever help because Granola's right eye can lock onto his vitals every time. But Goku disagrees and says he just lacks training to use Ultra Instinct to its full abilities. Granola tells Goku not to make excuses and says he's ending the Saiyan line here. Then he uses an attack just like Moro's. Goku barely manages to teleport away in time to Vegeta in the Cerulean City. Vegeta has figured out that Granola is the survivor of a race he'd heard about long ago that was wiped out by the Saiyans. This explains the grudge he holds and that Maki and Oil were using them all along. Goku asks if they should try to convince Granola, but Vegeta said it won't help since he wants to wipe out the Saiyans. So Goku has to beat him first, then convince him. So he uses Ultra Instinct, the form, and faces Granola once again. This time, Granola can't perceive any vitals, and the battle is extremely one-sided. Granola can't touch Goku, and every attack from Goku is far stronger than before. Goku tries to talk to Granola now that it's over, but Granola never said he lost. The Granola he's been fighting was a clone sent to fight Goku and Vegeta, but he underestimated them. This had the unintentional benefit of wearing down Goku's Ultra Instinct until its accuracy and stamina dropped, giving Granola the opening to deliver the finishing blow. With Goku down, Vegeta steps up. He tries to reason with Granola a little bit, but Granola doesn't believe a word he says. So Vegeta transforms into Super Saiyan Blue Evolution and tells Granola to prepare to perish. Vegeta and Granola begin to fight, but Granola is clearly stronger. Even his version of destruction is more powerful than Vegeta's. Granola is impressed by their power, but he tells Vegeta this struggle is pointless. No matter how powerful he is, Granola remains the strongest in the universe. Vegeta admits that Granola is stronger right now, but he's sure he'll win. Vegeta tells Granola that rankings are well and good, but they only reflect a moment. Vegeta has even gotten stronger during this fight, and with nothing on the line, he can truly enjoy it. Even after taking a blow to a vital point, he's still happy to be fighting. Then Vegeta's aura begins to flare a rich purple, and Vegeta reveals his new transformation based off the teachings of Beerus. According to Vegeta, his power is unbounded. This new form has closed the gap between him and Granola. Granola is starting to get flustered. This power is well beyond anything he expected from the Saiyans. In contrast to Ultra Instinct that protects from damage, this form turns damage into power. Vegeta tells Granola that Goku's body may have a mind of its own, but he's all ego. So go ahead and call this form. <laughs> Ultra Ego. Listen, the form is cool, all right? But the name is a little goofy. Granola can't believe a grunt under Frieza is this powerful. But Vegeta tells Granola that the Saiyans were also a victim of Frieza's tyranny. But Granola refuses to believe him. So Vegeta continues to fight Granola. Oatmeal tries to talk reason to Granola as well, but he doesn't want to hear it. He rips off his headpiece that holds Oatmeal and throws it to the side. He thinks as the strongest, he doesn't need support from anyone. Granola tells Vegeta he isn't the only one who grows strong while he fights. Even worse, the damage Vegeta has taken is starting to accumulate. He even needs to dodge some attacks now because he's starting to lose consciousness mid-combat. As the dust of the battle clears, there's something hidden. Oh, that's for you. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. But over here, Granola is charging an attack while concealed. Once Vegeta sees it, he also charges an attack that'll destroy anything it touches. As Vegeta's attack makes its way to Granola, his left eye turns red as well. With this new power, he easily destroys Vegeta's attack. Vegeta drew out power from Granola in the same way Granola did for him. Now Granola is winning again, and eventually even Ultra Ego fades. Just as it looks like Vegeta is about to die, Goku flies in and knocks Granola away. Goku says to Vegeta he'll take over for now, but Vegeta kicks Goku away. Vegeta says that with nothing to protect, he won't agree to fight side by side with him. Goku asks Vegeta about protecting his own life, but he says death is better than teaming up with Goku. Granola tries to strike Vegeta dead while he's off guard, but Goku Goku manages to knock Vegeta out of the way in time. Granola asks how Goku reacted in time, and Goku says he has a read on the way Granola targets vitals, so it won't work on him anymore. Granola tries to hit Goku's vitals again, but it just doesn't work like it did before. Goku explains that by shifting his body slightly, he doesn't avoid the whole attack, but he can move his vitals out of harm's way. Granola says that a defensive strategy will never surpass him, and Goku agrees. After a short fight, Goku gets knocked to base form, and Vegeta approaches Goku, saying he 
he's tagging in. He politely asks Goku to let him do this alone. Goku agrees and tells Vegeta to try not to die with a concerned look. Vegeta asks Granola if his life has no meaning beyond revenge, to which Granola doesn't answer. That was enough for Vegeta. He transforms into Ultra Ego again, and the two begin to battle. The fight takes the two into a Shigarian city, and Granola begs they don't do this here, but Vegeta doesn't listen and uses it to his advantage. Granola knocks Vegeta down and blasts him at point blank range. Granola drops down, exhausted, but then a wall breaks and he sees a terrified mother and child reminding him of his own past. Vegeta tells Granola he thinks Granola's grudges are well deserved and he can't object to Granola destroying him, but he warns Granola that's just history repeating itself. The Cerulean's were never like the Saiyans. Granola says the Saiyans took everything from them, and he'll never move past that. In a final gambit, Granola uses his remaining life force to charge an attack that'll kill both him and Vegeta. Vegeta apologizes to Beerus. The powers of the Gods of Destruction were beyond him. He accepts this fate to the Saiyans. Goku runs to stop them, and at the same time, Monaito flies in Granola's ship with oatmeal. Monaito gets Granola's attention, and Goku is able to knock him down, stopping the death of both Granola and Vegeta. Monaito steps out of the ship, and both Goku and Vegeta are surprised to see a Namekian. Granola is furious his revenge has been interrupted, but Monaito says he had lied to Granola. There was one Saiyan that didn't earn his vengeance, the one that saved them 40 years ago. Bardock. Now, I have my own thoughts about Bardock being important to the story in this way, but I'll save those for a different video. Comment your thoughts about this narrative choice below. Anyway, we finally learned what happened 40 years ago. The Saiyans invaded Planet Serial, wiping out the Cerulean's and the Namekian's on the planet. Bardock is the one that finds Granola and his mother. They remind him of Gine and Kakarot. The other Saiyans leave, and Bardock stays behind to look for survivors. He finds Monaito as well, and brings Granola and his mother to him. He leaves the two remaining Cerulean's and tells them to keep off Frieza's radar. Before he goes, Monaito asks his name, and he says Bardock. Monaito says Goku is the spitting image of Bardock, and Vegeta reveals to him that Bardock is his father. It's actually smart having Vegeta do this since he was teamed with Raditz in the past, and it's likely he knew about Bardock. Something doesn't add up to Granola, though. Why didn't his mother survive? It turns out Bardock ended up staying longer to get healed by Monaito, and because of it, he's there to see the heaters arrive to broker off the planet. They overhear Elec talking about selling the planet to the Shigarians and how they aren't destined to serve under Frieza forever. As they're listening, Granola wakes up and screams because he sees Bardock. Monaito quickly knocks Granola out, but it's too late. The heaters heard him. Bardock quickly sets up a situation that looks like he's about to kill the remaining survivors of the planet, and Elec tells him to get on with it. Bardock tries to explain that the Namekian's strange ability might be worth checking out, but before he could finish, Elec shoots Granola's mother dead. Elec tells Bardock to kill the other to, but he quickly turns and attacks the heaters instead, giving them a chance to escape. Elec knows they might have overheard their conversation, so the three of them have to die. Gas says he'll handle it, and Elec leaves it to him. Back in the present, Gas is thinking about the past and how he'll never suffer such indignity again because he's grown strong. Elec agrees, but tells him it never hurts to have insurance. Maki gets gas from Elec since Granola, Goku, and Vegeta have stopped fighting, so Elec will search for the final Dragon Ball on his own. Back on the battlefield, Granola can't handle the revelations. Not only was he saved by a Saiyan, but his mother was killed by Elec, the man he's been working for for decades. He's angry at Monaito for lying, but it was the only way for them to survive. Vegeta asks if Bardock beat Gas, and Monaito says he did. Vegeta is surprised because Bardock was a low-class warrior. Before Monaito can explain what happened, though, the sky goes dark quickly and goes away just as fast. Elec has made his wish. Then, a massive power appears on the planet. Maki and Oil present the true strongest in the universe, and out walks a much older looking Gas. Gas quickly handles everyone, creating objects out of key to use as weapons or obstacles as he fights. Gas is happy he's finally allowed to kill Granola, then he realizes Goku is Bardock's son. Gas is about to kill Goku, but Monaito frees Granola, who manages to shoot Gas in the back and draw his attention. Then Monaito frees Goku and begins healing him. Monaito asks him one favor, please save Granola, to which Goku says he'll do what he can. As Granola fights, he 
asked why they let him live. Gas said they didn't know Granola and Manito had survived till several years later. We see in the past that Granola has made a name for himself as a bounty hunter, and Elec took advantage of the fact that Monito never told Granola about what Elec did and recruited him for the heaters. Monito regrets that choice and says he doesn't even live up to being a Namekian because he can't even restore Goku's energy. Then Goku remembers they had one Senzu left. He asks Vegeta about it, but it's in his armor that he threw away. Granola gets knocked out by gas and Goku is healed enough to jump back in for a bit. He tells Vegeta to find the Senzu and eat it immediately. Vegeta tells Goku not to die, similar to what Goku said earlier, but with a less somber context. Goku turns Super Saiyan Blue and he's holding his own against Gas, but clearly Gas is stronger. Vegeta finds the Senzu, but instead of eating it, he offers it to Granola, telling him to settle this grudge with his own strength. Granola eats the Senzu and rejoins the fight. He puts on oatmeal again, apologizing to his support unit and saying he'll always want it to back him up. Granola and Gas start battling, but Granola actually has the upper hand because Gas is only using powers he had before the wish. As Maki puts it, it isn't that he can't wield his new power, he just doesn't want to. Granola taunts Gas for holding back, so Gas begrudgingly starts using his new techniques and powers. Instant transmission, destruction, and everything else Granola can do, but stronger. Gas versus Granola turns into a battle of teleporting. Despite Gas being stronger, Vegeta notes his use of instant transmission is sloppy, so Granola still stands a chance, but as they continue to trade blows, Gas slowly gets more and more accurate until he can track every one of Granola's moves. Granola's final gambit is using his clone technique to distract Gas while his main body charges an attack at point-blank range. But the cost is his main body feels all the damage the clones took. Monaito goes to heal him, but Granola tells him it isn't over yet. Elec removes Gas's head decoration, which liberates his inner nature and his true power. Maki says they lose all sense of self when their instincts are liberated, but Elec says Gas can handle it. I guess there's a kind of like their version of the Saiyan Zozaru form. Gas begins to bulk up and returns to the battlefield acting like a mindless brute. He's far stronger now and he's easily beating Granola. Then he attacks everyone he sees. Vegeta is next, but Goku jumps in to help him. When Gas sees Goku, he goes flying back, traumatized from fighting Bardock. This is what Elec needed. As Gas remembers the pain of that loss, he returns to his senses. Now with full control over his instincts, Gas is the true strongest in the universe. Gas uses his new power to immobilize Goku and Vegeta. Granola tries to kill Elec, but Gas teleports him to safety. Granola is furious and charges a blast, but before he can fire it, Gas breaks Granola's forearms, shoots out both his eyes, and it ends with Elec shooting Granola through the torso the same way he killed his mother. Goku is mad, but he just can't do anything. Then Vegeta gives him the last of his energy to go and fight. So Goku turns Super Saiyan Blue again. He attacks Gas, but before he loses his cool, Goku calms down. He tells Gas they have no reason to fight, so he asks Gas to leave. Gas is surprised that Goku isn't angry at Granola's death, but Goku says he has to remain calm for his special move to work. Elec says he can't let them live, so Gas attacks Goku. He's messing with Goku, using things that won't actually kill him, hoping to see the same fire he saw in Bardock, but it just isn't there. Gas asks if Goku is really Bardock's son, and Goku says he lost his memories when he was little. Gas understands now, and says he cannot fall to someone that can't comprehend who he really is. For now, Goku is getting beaten. Gas and Goku are momentarily separated, and they both see Monaito healing Granola. He's still barely alive. Gas is about to kill Monaito, but Goku grabs Gas and teleports to another planet. Then Goku taunts Gas to see if he can follow him by teleporting. Eventually, they end up in the Galactic Patrol prison, where the prisoners remember Gas as the kid who once pissed himself, which is hysterical. They continue to teleport after each other, and Goku asks if Gas should really be following Elec. Goku's own brother tried to kill him a while ago, so Gas might want to watch his back. Gas continues to follow Goku as he teleports from place to place until eventually Goku finds Whis. Then Goku teleports back to each world they went to in reverse order until he's back on Planet Serial, leaving Gas no way to teleport back since he can't sense Goku from this distance. Gas asks Whis which way Planet Serial is, and he tells him. Then Gas flies through space to get back. Most surprisingly, the Oracle Fish doesn't recognize Gas. He's clearly not the prophesied strongest in the universe. Back on Planet Serial, the remaining heaters know they can't beat Goku, so they back off for now. Whis planted a communicator on Goku, and he calls him to tell him that Gas will be there in 20 Earth minutes. Whis then reminds Goku he has to discover his own version of Ultra Instinct. He must listen to the voice within himself and find out what he really is. That's when Monaito gives Goku Bardock Scouter. There's saved audio on it, and with a little help from Oatmeal, they get it to work again, in hopes of finding out how Bardock 
Bardock beat Gas. A voice echoes from the scouter. It's Bardock telling Monaito and Granola they have to stay alive. And this triggers Goku to regain his memories. In the past, we see the battle between Gas and Bardock. Bardock is stronger than Gas expected, but Gas isn't taking any damage from Bardock's attacks. Monaito tells Bardock to run and let them accept their fate, but Gas says that wouldn't matter because the Saiyans aren't fated to last much longer anyway. This actually solves an issue with modern Dragon Ball. How did Bardock figure out Frieza's plan so easily? With this extra piece of information, it all makes a lot more sense now. The two continue to fight, and Gas unleashes a bit of his true nature. At the same time, Monaito collects the Dragon Balls. He tries to teleport Bardock back to planet Vegeta, but Bardock refuses, just like Goku did after the Frieza saga. Monaito asks what Bardock wants, and he asks that his sons grow up well. We don't see what Monaito specifically says to Torombo, so take that as you will. I don't like this wish very much if it was actually made. Gas slams Bardock around by his tail until eventually it snaps off. Gas is about to finish him off, but Monaito blocks the final attack. This enrages Gas and leads to him fully unleashing his true nature. Munaito is knocked away and Bardock continues to fight, but it seems like he's doing better now. Gas asks if atonement or revenge motivate him, but Bardock says only an idiot would think about anything else besides winning in a battle of life or death. Then Bardock pushes past his limits and beats Gas. Elec is disappointed in Gas and tries to finish off Bardock, but he misses and he has to leave because Frieza has arrived. Then Monaito finds Bardock and tells him he won the battle. Back in the present, Goku remembers everything up to being sent to Earth. Then he says to Vegeta he finds finally understands what Saiyan pride is about, or he remembers it, along with Bardock's face. Do babies have pride? I don't know, it seems weird. Anyway, Vegeta says he also lost sight of his pride by being caught up in his guilt. This pride is described by Goku as having total faith in your own power. Monaito says a people's pride isn't about atoning for sins or getting revenge, it's all about accepting your nature and sticking to your convictions. Monaito offers to heal up Goku and Vegeta, he even makes them new clothes, but they're Bardock's clothes. They both ask for their normal outfits instead. Gas arrives back on Planet Serial. Goku and Vegeta step out to face him. The two Saiyans power up, agreeing to fight together this time. Vegeta activates Ultra Ego, and Goku activates Ultra Instinct. So, the fight begins. But this time, what drives Goku and Vegeta is a pure desire to win at all costs. They fight together in one of the coolest fights in the manga, and eventually both push a Hakai towards Gas with all their might. Gas manages to push it back, though, and Vegeta leaves Goku to handle it while he fights Gas. Goku manages to deflect the attack, then returns to help Vegeta, but Vegeta's doing better now that he's taken damage. Gas and Vegeta continue to exchange blows, but Gas downs Vegeta. The way to beat Ultra Ego is obvious. Kill him in one blow and be done with it. Goku is about to jump in, but then Vegeta delivers a devastating punch while he thanks Gas for the prime fuel. Vegeta tells Goku to stay back. His Ultra Ego continues to evolve, but Goku's Ultra Instinct is no different than before. Vegeta tells Goku to figure it out fast, and until he does, Gas is his. So, Goku begins to meditate and contemplates his own Ultra Instinct while Vegeta continues to struggle against Gas. It seems like Vegeta is finally down for good, but he gets up and rushes Gas again, screaming that he is no longer bound by limits. Gas is terrified, but just before the attack lands, Vegeta stands unconscious mid-attack before falling to the ground. Gas calls the technique stupid and readies to give Vegeta an equally stupid death, but Goku puts a barrier around Vegeta and moves him out of harm's way. Then Gas targets Goku, but Goku's barrier is too strong for gas to break. Somehow. Luckily, Goku has figured it out. He uses Ultra Instinct signs since he can utilize his emotions and Ultra Instinct together rather than separating the two. The look on Goku's face reminds Gas of Bardock, and that terrifies him. Gas and Goku begin their battle, but it's clear that Goku is winning. Goku says he's just barely stronger than Gas now, but he doesn't have long, so he needs to finish this quickly. The fighting style Goku uses is far less like Whis and far more like Goku, and even a bit Saiyan in some cases. Gas desperately uses his weapons, but they're no use. Goku even uses a wrecking ball Gas made against him, but only as a distraction before landing a powerful kick. Elec makes his way to Gas and yells at him that they need his power for Frieza. The Saiyans were only a stepping stone. Goku tells Elec not to force Gas to fight, and they can fight again in the future, but Elec says there won't be a next time for Gas. Then Gas arises in a blinding aura, but he seems far more old and frail than before. Gas says his new power is burning away every cell in his body to fuel it, keeping him the strongest in the universe. Goku doesn't stack up to this power at all. As Goku and Gas clash, it's clear Goku will lose, but he continues to try until a blast separates the two. It's Granola. He's back up again. He tells Goku to wager everything on his strength, to which Goku agrees. Goku will keep Gas busy until Granola can charge up the winning attack. 
Goku is quickly knocked down again, but he manages to put a barrier around Granola. Gas knocks Goku out, but then Vegeta knocks Gas away and tells Granola to hurry up. Maki and Oil try to help Gas, but Munaito just knocks them out with hypnosis. Now Granola is finally ready, but he can't fire a blast that powerful this close to the ground without destroying the planet. That's when Goku awakens and activates Ultra Instinct. Then, using the giant key version of himself, he throws Gas into the atmosphere. The issue is, Granola's eyes are still blurry, but Oatmeal helps him aim, and he fires off the final attack. Gas falls to the ground defeated, but Granola says he didn't kill him because he isn't out for revenge anymore. Gas will be unconscious for a few days, though. Then, Granola apologizes to Goku and Vegeta before falling to the ground. He sacrificed more of his remaining life to fuel that final attack. Monaito runs over to heal him, but now he's able to bring Granola back to full strength with no issue. His healing powers have grown stronger from their constant use this arc, so he heals everyone back to normal. Elec tries to leave the planet, but as he does, a blast goes through Monaito. Gas has gotten up again, and this time he's looking even more decrepit than ever. He mocks Granola's mercy, then Goku and Vegeta charge in, but Gas tosses them around like they're nothing, and even broken bones don't slow Gas down. Elec is excited. Gas will be the strongest in the universe until the moment he dies. He sacrificed that much of Gas's life to the surprise of Maki, Oil, and even Gas himself. Elec tells Gas to stop wasting time, but it's too late. Frieza lands on Planet Serial to the shock of everyone present, and even more surprising, he kills Gas in one attack after transforming for just a moment. Then Gas turns to a pile of bones, and Frieza crushes his skull. Frieza demands Elec's reason for summoning him, but Elec lies and says their wires got crossed. However, Frieza knows the truth. Elec hoped to have Gas kill him, and he even knew about Elec's ambitions for the last 40 years. Frieza just chose to keep the heaters around for his own own benefit. He tells Elec there's nothing he doesn't know, like the fact that Elec is the weakest of the heaters. Then, Frieza kills him. Goku and Vegeta ask how Frieza is so strong when Gas wished to be the strongest in the universe, but Frieza says he must not have counted since he was in a different dimension. He found a room of spirit and time on a world he conquered and used it to get 10 years of training. That training culminated as Black Frieza, the form he momentarily changed into to kill Gas. Goku turns into Ultra Instinct Sign, or what fans call True Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta Vegeta uses Ultra Ego, but Frieza charges in and beats them both with one punch before leaving them to wallow. He chooses not to kill them, just because, so Frieza leaves and with no other option, Maki and Oil join him as waitstaff. Goku and Vegeta head to Monaito and Granola to see if the old Namekian will make it, but as they do, he's fully healed by Whis, who just appeared on the planet. He did it as a special favor for a friend of Goku. Whis tells Goku and Vegeta they need to return quickly to help Beerus make instant noodles. They ask if Granola wants to join them, but he says he needs to fix planet cereal with the Dragon Balls. Then, Monaito will seal them away for good. So Vegeta gives him the radar that the heaters stole, and Monaito gives Goku Bardock Scouter. So Whis, Goku, and Vegeta leave. Goku asks if Frieza was the strongest warrior mentioned by the Oracle Fish, but Whis gives a vague answer. It may be Frieza, or perhaps the strongest warrior emerged elsewhere, which makes Goku even more excited to return to his training. So that's it. It's definitely a muddier story than the Moro arc to me, but overall, it's a fine enough arc. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and thank you so very much for watching.